This is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our text today is Jonah, the fourth chapter, verses 5 through 8. Well, in the previous section, God has ended with a question. Is it right for you to be angry, Jonah? Jonah responds. He sulks. He does what a little child does when they don't get their way. It says, Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there, a tent, a little shelter, maybe keep the wind and the sun off him just a little bit. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. He's hoping that at some point God will still find out that these people are truly too evil to save, too evil to forgive. There sits Jonah waiting for God, waiting to prove God wrong, waiting to see that Jonah will be proven right. How many of us dare say that we're right and God is wrong? I know we don't usually articulate it with our lips like Jonah, but it's in our hearts, isn't it? This just isn't right, God. People are out getting free handouts when they should be off to work. Uh, People are out receiving grace and mercy when they should be punished for their evil. On and on our story can go. And so we wait to see what God will do. But we know what God's going to do. It's been revealed in Jesus Christ. God will save every single time. So as he sat there, as he sat there, it says the Lord God appointed a bush and made it to come up over Jonah. In God's good creation, a bush began to rise out of the ground because everything that happens is on God's watch and at God's command. This bush comes up and it gives more shade over his head. Apparently the, the booth that he built was a little inadequate to the task and so God adds to it. Uh, It's kind of reminiscent of Adam and Eve in the garden when they decide to cover up their nakedness with fig leaves. A very scratchy proposition, I'm thinking. God replaces it with animal skins. Same thing here, I think. So God gives shade over his head, and the bush grows up and saves him from his discomfort. And so it says Jonah was very happy about the bush. I was beginning to think Jonah could never be happy about anything. Sometimes I can be that way. Maybe you know people who are just joy-challenged. They can't ever be happy about anything. Uh, But this bush makes Jonah happy. Now in verse 7, it says, When dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm. Appointed a bush to grow up, now appoints a worm that attacks the bush, and so it withers away. No more shade, no more comfort, no more happiness. When the sun rose... God prepared or appointed a sultry east wind, a hot wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint, and once again asked that he might die. It'd be better to be dead, God, than to be in this position. He says, it is better for me to die than to live. Now, on the one hand, that's a childish way of expressing despair. It'd be better if I was dead. How many kids have looked at their parents and said, I know you wish I was dead, or I'm going to run away so that you can't do this. That seems to be where Jonah's at. But there's a deeper dimension to this, isn't there? To wish for death, that's to wish for separation from God and God's good creation. What possibly could be that awful? Now, I know people wrestle with that. And the depths of despair and depression can be very real, and people do consider ending their lives. But the message here in Scripture is that when we get to that point, we're not in the right place, for God's grace and mercy are big enough to take care of us. God is teaching Jonah a lesson here. God gives and God takes away. The bush is given, then a worm comes and the bush is taken away. God grants what we have in this life, our daily bread as we pray in the Lord's Prayer. 
and we should be satisfied with it because it all comes into our hands at the grace and mercy of God. When God acts in grace and mercy for others, we should respond in joy, not waiting for people to get their just desserts. I guess the biggest thing that comes to me in this text is that Jonah has chosen to be miserable and in despair instead of rejoicing in the grace, mercy, and mighty acts of God. Resurrection has taken place in Nineveh. How can he despair? If Nineveh can be saved, then there's hope for the whole world. But Jonah can't see that because of his hatred. May we pray to transcend our own closely held convictions, our beliefs that we think are solid as rocks. May we transcend our hatred and our displeasure at others so that the grace of God may raise the world up. Amen.